Bienvenidos a Colombian Accents. Welcome. Bienvenidos. I am an English teacher. I work for Centro Colombo Americano in Manizales and also for um, Universidad Nacional. So I teach kids, teens and adults. I am an Edmodo ambassador and a certified trainer. So I sometimes have trainings with teachers that want to learn how to use the platform in schools. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, um, Andrea, share with us, would you, uh, what was, or what were some of the most difficult things that you had to deal with and, and how, how did you and what did you learn from it, please? I think one is planning. Because it's not the same when you plan to be in the classroom and you know that you're going to be there and it's going to be like an hour, two hours of class and that's it. Right now, when you have to move from like the classroom to the online space, it, it takes forever to get things ready. So I guess one of the things was like planning and managing the time and know that you don't have to be stuck to the computer the whole day. You can actually do some other things in the meantime and like take advantage of the time that you have. So I think those two are the things that like at the beginning were the most difficult for me. What changes did you have to make, Andrea? Well, for instance, at the beginning, we were used to having textbooks and, and the activities that we did in the classroom. But then with all the change, it required us to prepare and design material. So it, it was a little time consuming at the beginning and kind of overwhelming at first. But then it was just about getting creative and taking the most of the time that you had and actually like set a time limit. So know that you were not going to be stuck like to the computer the whole day. You needed to distribute the hours and say, okay, I'm going to do this right now, this tomorrow, this um, the following day. Yeah. Too much screen time. Huh? And that can actually affect your health. I started getting headaches um, because like the, the amount of time in front of the computer was just too much. And I mean, sometimes, sometimes teachers think that the best ideas come right in the middle of, of a class or right in the middle of doing something. But sometimes you just turn the computer off and you have this flow of ideas. So just take out a piece of paper and write down whatever you have there. Think on paper. That's what mm -hmm. my wife, that's what my wife tells me all the time. Think on paper. I mean, it's nice that you tell me, but think on paper. <laughs> Andrea, uh, how about your students? What's some of the most challenging difficulties that your students have had to go through uh, lately? And, and the parents, uh, what do you think uh, of that, uh, Andrea, please? I think connectivity is something that is affecting people everywhere. Um, I work for a public university, so some of our students are really under resourced. Like, they do not, some of them don't have a computer or the internet connection is not strong enough because they live in small towns. And since they went, they traveled from Manizales to their hometowns, it's, it's hard for them and you need to adapt to that situation. Yes, I think right now this like online teaching has made teachers more human somehow. It makes us reflect on the things and understand that not everybody has the same privilege that other students have it's it's different and for people say no it's the same thing you you're just in front of a computer you're talking to the people but it's not the same you're not in the classroom with your students and it's not the same dynamics right now the only thing you see sometimes is the name of your student and the microphone is off and I am a person that believes a lot in like body language and facial expressions and like actually get to see your students' emotions and that that changed completely right now. You also said that you work with Edmodo, right? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. What is that? What is Edmodo and why should people be interested in it? Okay, so Edmodo is an educational platform 
I became an Edmodo user five years ago and I was just using it in my classroom with my students and that was it. Around three years ago, I took two courses, one to be an Edmodo ambassador and another to be an Edmodo certified trainer. And like everything kind of started there. So two years ago, uh, in August 2018, I was one of the Edmodocon speakers. I think people don't know what Edmodocon is. It's a convention that Edmodo has and it's on live, it's live streamed on YouTube. So they have speakers from different countries and I went there two years ago and it kind of like made me fall even more in love with Edmodo because I, I got to see because the um, the convention like Edmodocon is at the headquarters of Edmodo in San Mateo in California. So to be there and see how everything worked and the engineers and like everything that happens between behind the scenes, it was awesome. Then it was in January 2019. I went with them to BET, like the British Educational Training Technology Show that was in London. And I was like the Latin American ambassador there. And to see all the buzz and all the activities, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And then from that on, that was last year, this year and because of the of this situation we are li we are currently living they opened they had um an open position to look for global um community managers so one of them was in spanish and i applied and i was accepted so from i will say the end of march i have been uh, the global community manager for edmo en español the community and I've been working with teachers in all Latin America and Spain, and it has been incredible. Awesome. I love doing this. Lovely. Sounds like you enjoy what you do with Edmodo. Lovely. And you went to California, and, and that's near I San Francisco, it. right? San Mateo. Yeah, and, uh, and London. Oh, well. Yeah, so, well, yeah so it's like 30 minutes. Awesome. I'm sure there's a, there's a, there are lots of people out there that are using Edmodo, and if anyone is interested in, in, in learning more or, or maybe contacting you, I'm sure you'd be available to, right? Yes. I'm here to help everyone that wants to go and try the platform. Cool, cool, cool. For those out there that are using Edmodo, and for those out there that are not using uh, the platform, could you show us something like, you know, this is what you can do with it, <laughs> please? Sure. So let me show you how the platform works. This is what happens. So this is my, uh, this is the Edmodo homepage. Okay. What you can do with Edmodo is you can actually create your classes. It becomes a space for everybody to interact. So you are linked to your school, obviously. And when you go to your school um, page, it's the space where all the students can see what is happening. So you can, like your school can share th with them news and things that are happening and videos and information. Okay, so this is the one from, from the Colombo. But when you go to your homepage, you have in here the two spaces. One is called uh, Miss Classes. Yes, so my classes are here, my groups are here. And the difference between classes and groups is that groups are for teachers. So this is for professional development somehow. Whereas classes. So what happens in here is when you're going to create your class, it's very easy. You just click here here and it says uh, create a class so for example i will say at moto beginners i just create a short description and here i just choose a level so i will say this is higher edge higher ed 
And since this is for Edmodo, I will say this is... Which one can I choose? Probably... No, maybe not computer, but like I will say professional development. And like something I... I'm a very visual person. So what I do is to choose different colors for my classes. And in here, um, I click Formación en Edmodo, Create. And just as simple as that, you have your classroom. So it gives you the opportunity to add your students or just explore. And here, well, the people that are linked to Edmodo, oh, I have here things uh, for them. Actually, so it, it, it looks like a it looks like a learning management system slash learning social network. <laughs> Would that be a, an accurate I would description say like, of it? Yeah, like three or four years ago, Edmodo, like the layout was very similar to Facebook because everything was blue. And it's very easy to use. You have the, the part that uh, is for the notifications. You have a chat uh, for students to write to you. So yes, taking into account the homepage, you can filter things because in Edmodo, you can add teaching connections. So you can connect with teachers from all around the world. And it has something similar to Twitter through hashtags. So here, if you, for example, if you're teaching in language arts, you just hashtag English language arts, you click there, and you're going to see all the people that are a part of this community and that are sharing things. So those are different spaces that Edmodo has, your classes, and something that um, people are really liking right now is that um, you have everything in the same place. Like I don't have to go around different platforms. I have everything here. So for example, I just click in progress and I can choose my groups. So for example, these are the ones from the university. This is the one from the Colombo. And you have everything in here. You have the grades, you can give them badges like the Boy Scouts. And everything is in the same place. There is an area that is called Discovery. It's for teachers to go and find games and find different apps. For example, Jumpstart Academy is a partner company with Edmodo. It's a math academy. So math teachers are finding in here different games. Happy Not Perfect is something related with emotional learning and like having a healthy mindset. So it, it's very good for, for this moment right now because people are kind of feel stressed. We have next gen news that are just news for students. You assign them to watch a video. You can ask them questions from that. And for English teachers, we have fireworks, we have the survivor game. And so it's very nice. You have your own library, which is unlimited as long as the files you upload, like don't go over a hundred. And you have the messages that is like the chat. And since right now I am like with this global community manager role, teachers write to me asking me questions like, why can't I export things? My students send me the files. And since Edmodo is linked with Office Online, all the files are here. So I can open them, edit them, add comments to them, everything in the same space. And it's just something that has been going on for a while. You can filter your activity, yes. You can choose only to see activity from your classes and or just see activity from the groups that you are. And everything is going to appear here. Something that I really like is the quizzes because I have everything here. I can create very nice and like visually attractive um, quizzes, quizzes for my students and things that are easy for them to understand. So, let me see in here if I can. I here there's a space where that 
is going on, they can access that from there. So it, it, for, for example, to like for the students, it says, you have assignment uh, for next Friday, or remember to take scheduling, which I think it's very cool. Great, great. So uh, you said something important, it's like you can put everything in one place. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Well, thank you, Andrea. Thank you for taking us through Edmodo. I'm sure You're if well, anyone is interested out there, can contact you. And I'm sure you uh, be of course. willing to help. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome, Julian. Okay, so you were talking about the quizzes, and you know, uh, I was wondering, how do you see assessment? What do you think? Um, how flexible should teachers be, or how should assessment be approached? Um, here but I think right now it depends you know, on the way that you are having your classes. If you're having a like, um, synchronous class or say synchronous, so it depends on what you're doing. For example, the quizzes that I have had in the platform, they have been synchronous. So all my students are connected, they take them there. And um, some teachers might be a little concerned about students cheating. Because, I mean, again, they are home, they have the book, they have the notebook, they have whatever they, they have used to <laughs> write notes. But it's up to the way that you plan your quizzes, because you can randomize the questions, you can set a time limit, and you can uh, either uh, enable or disable the option to show the student's results upon completion. So that way, if someone finishes first, they're not going to run and tell the others what the right answers were. Maybe. Cool, 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 cool. Awesome. Um, changing here the topic a little bit, um, how effective do you think of, uh, distance learning and, and distance teaching uh, it really is at this current stage? And what do you think is the, the future of it in the, long, in the short and the long term? I think it always comes to the first, like to the same thing. It's up to the student's responsibility. It's like, for example, when I have a class and my students ask me, like, teacher, am I really going to finish this and be able to speak English? Like, will I ever speak English fluently? And I was like, it's up to you. Because everybody is receiving the same instruction, but it depends on what the students are doing on their own. And right now, it's up to how much they can take advantage of the situation. This is the new reality we are facing. And there's nothing we can do so far just apart from giving our best. And that applies also to the students. It's up to them if they really want to take advantage of having the classes the way we are having them right now and focus and give their best or if they want to be the kind of student behind the camera that is not showing the face with the microphone off and not really participating yeah what do you think of the future of the near future not just for education but for society what's in your mind do you think have you heard the neural link uh, you know what they're thinking of embedding like like devices into you, your your skull and connecting it to your brain and and you know AI virtual worlds. What do you think of the of the of the future, not just of education but society? What do you think? I think right now we are in the part, like we are in an era where nothing seems impossible anymore. <laughs> Having um, this kind of emergency, like nobody thought that we were going to be locked in our houses for two or three months. That was just not something we were expecting. So I guess what we can take from this situation is expect the unexpected and believe that right now everything is changing progressively and fast so advances are advances are coming new technologies are coming and sadly crises are coming too because economy for example it's something that is going to hit us hard soon and we need to be prepared for that so I think this new reality really states that things are not the way they were before and it will probably take a while to go back to the way things were. True. True. 
Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was thinking, listening to you, I was thinking, uh, what skills do you think uh, you, know, you would recommend for anyone out there to start learning or, or, or relearning? A skill that people need to, to start practicing right now is everything that has to go around technology. Because seeing, like some of my colleagues, um, maybe not the ones from the language center at, at the university, but I know teachers that they just refused to work with computers. They refused to work with these things and right now, they are trying hard and they are seeing the benefits behind that. So I, I think right now being a digital person, a digital teacher, digital any, anything, it's becoming, it's becoming more and more and more important. Cool, all right, very good. So um, Andrea, before I let you go, uh, just maybe, maybe, uh, uh, one more tip, something else that you would like to add, maybe share with teachers out there, a reflection, please, uh, Andrea, if you would. Sure, I think right now it's the time to take risks. So go ahead and explore beyond the things that you normally did in the classroom. And if you feel you can be actually very skillful at something, go for it. You, you know, it's not going to benefit only you, but maybe it can help other people. And be compassionate. Like, know that not everybody has the same opportunities you have. So just help others if you can. And give your best because right now it's, it's a situation that is affecting people in different, different ways. And emotionally, for example, it's something that people that suffer from anxiety, from depression, they are dealing with their own emotions. They are dealing with all this situation and it can trigger many things. So just by being a kind person and smiling to people and asking if they are okay, those things can be very helpful right now. And you never, or people never really understand or can imagine how important a smile is because it can change a person's day just by smiling at them they can they are valued that they matter to some as a teacher i think it's important to be that kind of teacher with your students always try to give your best and smile and ask how they are not only focus on the things you have in class i think that's very important be kind be kind to others huh yeah yeah definitely definitely thank you thank you andrea thank you so much for being with us in in colombian accents thank you for sharing thank you for taking the time and i hope to see you soon thank you for having me here cheers <laughs>